is Lara, and I'm one of the therapists here at Reclaim. And I specialize in working with folks around the issues of trauma, disordered eating, and body image. I also work around the issues of grief and loss, and have some background as well with addiction and spirituality. So when I think about what brought me into the field of therapy, I actually have to go way back to when I was a child. And I used to play with my brothers and with friends. And um, in elementary school, we would spend weekends together and be together after school. Um, and somehow, I'm not quite sure if I remember how, we developed this process whereby we had identified a tree in our yard as the problem tree. And this was a tree where we knew we could go and if we sat in a tree, it was one of these trees that had this sort of deep V in the trunk, and it was low enough where we could climb and sit in it. That was then an indication to the rest of us that there was a problem that person needed to discuss. And so if we saw someone in the tree, we would head on over, we would sit around them and listen to their problem and then offer our seven-year-old wisdom to them about how they might go about resolving that issue in their life. So from a very young age, there was this sense of wanting to help and be there for people. Um, and my journey was varied. I've been through some other careers before I came into therapy. But ultimately, it was my own lived experience of being in therapy as a client that helped me to realize that there are safe spaces in this world. There are safe spaces where we can show up as we are and we can be as honest as we need to be, no matter how challenging that is, no matter how ugly we think that is, and sit with someone who can hold that space for us without judgment and with a sense of presence that often isn't there with other people in our lives. And for me, I really experienced that um, with my long-term therapist for many, many years and realized that the more that I came, the more that I showed up the more that I was showing up for myself and the more that I did so, I would develop hope that I could change and I would realize, wait, I am changing. Um, and my therapist was really helpful in reflecting back to me how I was changing, but also helping me to, um, to face the challenges that I needed to face. Um, so that process for me was really meaningful and it was the place where I found hope and meaning and where I discovered that I could indeed come home to myself and it was safe to do so. And that was after many years of not being able to come home to myself, having to put on, having to be perfect, having to uh, be sure that everyone else was taken care of before I was. So the process of coming to realize that I mattered, that I was worthy while long, while painful at times has also been a wonderfully joyful healing experience. And I just remarked to someone the other day that it's kind of nice to live a life of contentment. It really is, you know, to be free of the drama that I used to struggle with, to be free of all the ups and downs, to be free of the anger. Um, and that doesn't mean that life's perfect. It doesn't mean I'm happy all the time, but it does mean that there's this sense of deep, deep groundedness and a sense of hope. So if someone would have asked me when I first set out to become a therapist, what fields I would be working in, what particular areas of therapy I would be working in, eating disorders, disordered eating, body image, and trauma would not have been on the list. I thought maybe grief and loss or just like sort of standard anxiety, depression stuff, but I never thought of these areas as areas that I would be working in and enjoying and loving um, in this current iteration of my career. And I have to say what brought me into it was my own work of healing, healing my relationship with my body and with food, working with wonderful people who gave me a sense that there are different ways to be in this world that are not in any way beholden to the diet culture and the fat phobia that we live with every day, and that I could learn and in fact, I was always worthy, worthy of taking up space, worthy of all the things that I dreamed of and loved, worthy of really reclaiming my life, no matter what size I was in, no matter what the scale said, and came to a point where I don't even look at the scale anymore. I don't own one. 
And that in of itself has been freeing. So to know and live that experience and to find others as well who are living in this way was really powerful for me. And I realized this is a community that's important for the world to know exists. And this work is important work. And I hope my clients, when they come sit with me, realize that, oh, wait a minute, you know, I can sit with this therapist and she gets it. She knows, you know, I'm a woman who's in a larger body and I always have been. I mean, it's varied along the way as I've been on one diet after another. Um, and I've struggled the whole time. I've never been happy in my body. And it wasn't until I did this specific work and found this way of being and doing and being free from the pressures of society, free from my own doubts and my own insecurities, and instead just embracing my body as it is and as it is on any given day at any different point in my life, um, embracing my relationship with food and learning to trust that I could have a relationship with food that wasn't fraught with binging and restricting, and that I could really step into my life and claim it fully and enjoy life in a way that I had never been able to before because I had been obsessed with calories and with losing weight and with trying to make my body into something that it's not meant to be, trying to make myself into something that I am not. So all that brought me here. And my hope is that I can sit with you in the same way and help you to discover your own process, your own way of tapping into that life that's been stolen from you in a lot of ways by our diet culture and help you to reclaim that yourself. When it comes to trauma, the way that I found myself into this work of trauma was really through my work with eating disorders and recognizing the connection between trauma, which is such an embodied experience, something that our bodies hold on to even when our minds aren't aware of it, and often then is played out in things like disordered eating, body image issues, addictions. And making that connection for me was really important. And then being able to lean in to the work of trauma and start to look at, you know, what are those narratives that came out of the traumas of my life? And that could be me, that could be you, that could be anyone. So that we all have events that happen in life, whether they are one-time events or they're chronic lived events, like the family of origin that we grew up in, that set the tone for a narrative that we tell. This narrative of being a victim, maybe, or the narrative of, I will never be happy. There's various narratives out there, infinite narratives. And each of us has our own internalized narrative that sometimes we don't even realize is under scoring our entire life. So the work of trauma for me is both being able to find a way to work with our bodies and help our body wisdom point us to the trauma that we have and ways that we can heal it, but also in doing so that the core beliefs that we live with are not ones based in trauma anymore, that our core beliefs can be ones based in hope and based in the idea that change is possible and that we no longer have to be victims and we can reclaim our lives and live lives of contentment and face the triggers that might be out there with a sense of strength and a sense of hope that we are and will be okay. You know, I love working with my clients to meet you where you're at and to utilize those things that speak to you in your life that really move you in various ways that inspire you and to bring them into the room when we're doing therapy together. So some of my clients are really into music. And so it might be something where we look at, okay, like, is there a way we can incorporate music into our work? whether it's incorporating it in such a way where listening to lyrics is something that helps us to really get some perspective and grounding and calm ourselves, or maybe music is a way that we feel safe in our bodies to start to move them and start to really experience our bodies fully when we've been so disconnected from them. That's but one example. There are so many examples out there. And when I meet with you as a client for the first time, I 
ask, you know, what is helpful to you? What do you like? What is enjoyable? What is something that you engage in on a regular basis? Um, and we use those things as we can, and we discover them together. And this is a partnered journey with you, right? Like this is ultimately your journey. It's not mine. And so I want to make sure that what it is that we are doing in session together is something that benefits you and that aligns with your values, aligns with your desires, aligns with your interests. Because I think that the work we do in therapy is work that's interwoven into every aspect of our lives. So let's use the things of our lives. I think what I'd like my clients to know about diet culture is that it's everywhere. That it's pervasive and creeps into every part of our lives. And so often it's so normal for us. I mean, think about it. I say sometimes to clients and in my own reflection on my own life, how many times have I gone out with friends of mine and we've had dinner together and the bulk of the conversation has been about the latest diet fad that everyone is engaged in or the latest exercise fad that everyone is engaged in. And all of this working toward being in a smaller body, a more fit body, a more toned body. That the conversation, that's it, right? That's so much of what we're talking about. It's so much of what we're exposed to, whether it be in magazines or social media or TV or what have you. And, you know, my best friend, I remember her once saying to me, and this was recently, she said, you know, I always thought all that talk was pretty boring. People would always want to talk about diets and food and exercise. And I thought, there's so much more to life. Like, there's so many more things that are interesting about you and about life than what you eat and how you're moving your body and what weight you are, or what size you wear. But society and diet culture likes to tell us that that's the only thing that matters. And, in, and until we get that right, until we fit the standards that society says we need to fit, of being in thin bodies that are beautiful and toned, we can't start the rest of our life. How many times have you said to yourself, I want to do this thing, but I'm not going to do it until I lose weight. Or I'm not going to do this until I feel more comfortable in my body. So many of us put off living. We don't think we're worthy of living. We don't think we're worthy of doing those things that bring us joy, of experiencing new things in life until our bodies fit some sort of definition that has been set forth by other people. You can claim your life right now. You can be in the body that you're in and you can find a sense of joy and contentment in that body. I believe that so much because I've experienced it. It doesn't mean you love your body every day. It doesn't mean your body doesn't have any pain ever. It doesn't mean there aren't times where you're struggling with body image. But the difference here is that it's not controlling each and every part of your lives. And that you have skills and you have help and support around managing those moments and really stepping into a place to say, I'm worthy. And I'm going to take up space in this world because I'm here, because I am, because I exist. And that's what's most important. So that's the work that I want to do with folks around diet culture. And we explore that together and we find a way forward to live lives free of diet culture and full of living, of joy, of contentment. So, what I want clients most to know is that you're not alone, that there are others out there who get it, who know what it's like to suffer, who know what it's like to specifically suffer in the ways that you do around body image, around food, around dieting, around trauma. And I want my clients to realize that there's a place where they can come and be understood and safe and find their own way home. So I'm, I want to read you a little blessing here. And this is a blessing that comes from this book called To Bless the Space Between Us by John O'Donohue. And um, to me, this sums up what is my hope for my clients. May all that is unforgiven in you be released. 
May your fears yield their deepest tranquilities. May all that is unlived in you blossom into a future graced with love. That's my hope for you in our work together. And I look forward to that journey. Thank you.